so I'm out here in my hay field. This will be a very different video from a lawnmower video, but I thought I'd just show a, a device I just purchased. This is a, a windrow moisture tester. Um, it's $299 from Agtronics or $353 from John Deere. I got the John Deere version because I wanted it immediately and I could get it at my local dealer as opposed to a week or so on the internet uh amazon wasn't it didn't have a quick delivery <clears throat> but anyway got got it and uh i've done a little research on multiple ways to try to check moisture in hay before you bale it which would be a great thing to be able to do uh, as opposed to the i don't know normal way maybe of baling a bale and checking it uh you know other than of course checking by hand just kind of seeing how it feels and all that but anyway so um I've got this device and then that there's there's information on the internet I'll link all this down below on how to build a little tube that you can compress uh, to simulate a uh, the hay that would be under compression in a bale and test it with the regular bale tester so uh, I've got that and then there's also the drying method using an oven or a microwave oven where you dry the more you weigh before dry the dry it out and weigh it afterwards and you know the weight that you lost lost was due to the uh, evaporation of the moisture so I'm gonna try to compare those three methods uh, maybe it'll be helpful to someone so to use the windrow moisture tester you get a five gallon bucket plastic five gallon bucket and you mark a ring around the inside that's 10 inches from the bottom that's because you want to be sure when you're pressing down with this, as I'll show you in a second, you don't get closer than three inches from the bottom with the probe. So if you press down uh, and you know, you're know you below that 10 inch ring, then you know you're too close to the bottom with the, uh, with the probe. So uh, it's a pretty good job, not that hard, but it's a tedious thing to fill, fill the bucket with with hay you have to just kind of fold it over or keep you know keep packing it in there till you get enough that's that you can press down because then the next step and sorry for this video jumping all around but is to come is to press down at a uh at 40 pounds of pressure and they recommend you take a, a bathroom scale and use it to practice what 40 pounds feels like my bathroom scale unfortunately is uh, kind of automated you, you, you push a button step on it and then it reads it reads your weight it not it doesn't react as you press so uh wouldn't help me but so i'm just guessing at 40 pounds so uh but i feel like that's pretty good pr pressing pretty hard is what 40 pounds would be so i'm basically going to press on this i can't do it very well with the camera so you'll have to trust me press on this turn uh, hit the power button while i'm pressing and it'll display RUN across the screen and then a number and that's your that's your moisture uh, so I'll tell you the result in a second okay so I've tested and uh, read 16.0 and 16.1 two different times so we'll say that's what the moisture meter is giving us uh, using this method okay so I'm under my shelter here now uh, with a microwave oven i bought just for this purpose it's a 75 dollar walmart special um, and i bought a uh, i was looking for a bowl that would hold about 100 grams of hay not sure even what 100 grams is actually looks like but it turns out this was almost perfect and i thought the it's a colander i thought the holes in it might be helpful for you know evaporation and so forth so it uh it was like a dollar and something very cheap so uh it will rotate in the microwave barely another one i looked at the the uh handles were a little too large it wouldn't turn inside this smaller microwave this is kind of the second from the lowest size um <clears throat> and i bought a scale that supposedly reads into 0.1 gram increments i I, it must do that only at really low end or something. I'm only seeing 0.5 increments, but that's still pretty good. I think it's a really cheap scale. Uh, they had it on clearance even for some reason. It's a little probably because not many people would want it. It has rechargeable batteries, so you you it's aggravating to have to charge it up as opposed to uh, swapping batteries when it goes dead. But it's working fine. And uh, one caution though, uh, I saw a video, I'll link down below a couple of them of people using this method to check hay, and they don't mention anything about power levels. Well, our first attempt, uh, 
was uh, you know i'm pretty good at burning things if you know about my other my, my other uh uh normal content uh burning up lawnmowers and such but anyway uh it caught on fire the, or was about to it was smoke the uh hay was smoking in there and uh <laughs> it uh we took it out it was still just smolder until we put it out with water but so 50 percent power however worked fine so maybe even a little higher would work and as you know probably how microwaves work at least the ones i'm familiar with they don't really throttle back the power output they simply cut on and off so you could hear it cutting on and off you know i guess about a 50 well obviously 50 percent duty cycle and uh but nothing caught on fire it it seemed to work so we'll give it a try one other caution though the tag on this really cheap colander was had metal behind it like a rfid type thing and uh it was sparking so you can see if it would even burn the burn the colander a little bit there till we realized what was happening we took that metal tag off so weird little gotchas there so let's prepare our sample the first step is to weigh our empty containers we're going to weigh it and we want to know what the net weight is so it weighs 132.5 grams okay so here's my hay sample and uh let's see how much it weighs we want something around 230 three, okay we're at 243 okay bouncing around wind's blowing a little out here that's probably what it is we'll call that 243 okay so we're ready to put our sample in the oven and we're gonna go 10 9 8 7 6 5 there we go we're at power level 5 for five minutes and start all right so just to talk a second while it's running i won't bore you with the full five minutes but the video, one of the videos I watched said to, to run it for five minutes, check the weight, then run it for one minute and check the weight and see if it had lost any, and then run it for, if it has lost a little, then run it for two minutes and check the weight. Okay, my five minute run is up. Let's uh, tear the scale and weigh. Okay, where's it? Two. Uh, boy, with a two twenty-eight point five. We're gonna call that. So I'm gonna put it back in and run it for another minute. Two twenty-eight point five. Once again, remembering to change my power level. And two minutes start. I mistakenly said two minutes. I really wanted to run it one minute, so I stopped it after one minute. Uh, it may not really matter, but I've run it one minute. Tear my scale again. I don't. This is not going to be the best test in the world because I don't know if my scale is stable as stable as I should have it. But uh, two twenty seven point five. So it only lost about a gram. But I'm going to go ahead and run it two more minutes anyway. I mean, you know, I need to try to burn up this oven, right? Okay, that was after an additional two-minute run. I'm sure these times aren't really uh, that important, but that's what the, the video I'll link below used, so I just copied that exactly. Okay, well, we have pretty much lost... Uh, <laughs> if I can keep, there we go. All right. Okay, I'd say it's of where it was before, 227.5. Okay, so we... Uh, we started with 110 grams of net weight and we lost 15 grams uh, of moisture during the heating process. So that 15 divided by 110 is 13.6 or so. So that's this test shows we had 13.6% moisture. Uh, notice there's, you know, we, we had just 100 grams or so, 110 out of this big bucket. So I just had reached in and tried to grab some sort of from the middle, but this sample, you know, was a much larger sample, much, you know, you know, anyway, I may have just grabbed a slightly drier section. Who knows? You really need to do a whole bunch of these to get a good test, I suppose, um, to see 
uh, a good comparison. But anyway, that's sort of in the ballpark. I mean, you, you know, you, we, our accuracies are not that great. In fact, the accuracy of this meter, I should point out, it says 2 to 4%. I don't know how you know whether you're getting 2 or getting 4. But anyway, so basically, I'd say you have to consider it to be 4%. I didn't actually look at the specs real close. I need to do that. It may specify in certain ranges it's 2% accurate and other ranges 4% accurate. It does say it's good for from 13 to 70% moisture, I think. So not real good on the low, real low end. But uh, anyway, I, I still think it's a very useful device. Good investment, I think, for quickly checking. Uh, but... But this test should be an extremely good test. You're just testing a very small sample at a time. Another method that's probably the cheapest method, uh, if you already have a, a standard bale probe like this that is very common, uh, is to build a little chamber that you can compress the hay in. So this was, again, I'll link down below, not my idea. Uh, but there's a... Um, uh, we, we took a piece of two inch pipe they said two inch abs but I, my hardware store didn't have abs so i just went with two inch pvc and we put a clean out adapter and a plug in the end at one end the other end's open and that's a three foot piece and then a two foot inch and a quarter uh pvc with uh, uh caps on each end i would say it'd be better to have that that's the plunger to pack it make it as you know, three feet long because it really packs tight in fact right now there's a little wad packed in there from a previous sample that's a you know won't go either way or i can't push it with that so i'm gonna need to get something like a broom handle or something smaller and longer that i can use to get that get that out but that's all there is to building that so we can unscrew this end anytime we want so we can push straight through from either end it's a nice clear shot I don't know if you can see it down in there, but I got some hay stuck down in there that I got to get out. So now I'm packing this to test with the standard uh, tester. And uh, I found that it's very difficult to pack with that tube, uh, at least initially, because your hay, uh, it, it, unless you get all the hay down in the tube, it builds up, you know, wants to be caught around the edge of that because it's close enough diameter to this to be uh, hard to pack so this is a, a very small uh, lightweight uh, t-post that works quite well i don't think i can show you and hold the camera at the same time but basically that's packing it in really well then i guess if i need to i can use that to pack it a little harder but uh, it's easy to get it packed too hard and you can't get your probe in so this is going to be, I believe, the ticket to packing it good enough anyway. Uh, I'm able to just kind of chomp on it and pack it down in there. Uh, I believe, my belief is this will be a little bit better than trying to do it with that other uh, plunger. Okay, so I have my, I have it filled maybe three-fourths full uh, packed material. And uh, as I press the meter down in it it felt about like going into a bale so that's a good feeling that i probably got it compacted about right not overly too hard to get in but it was you know reasonably hard like you'd expect so i'm pressing the test button let's see what we get look at there 16.7 that's pretty good and it matches the uh windrow tester quite well and a little bit higher than what our oven showed but uh anyway so this is the cheapest method, I guess, if you already own one of these. But it is a little bit of, I mean, it's time consuming, although packing hay in there is <laughs> time consuming as well. But uh, anyway, just thought I'd share what little I know, which is very little, but uh, just uh, some interesting ways to try to test your hay before you bale it.